to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Excellence is not just about money. It's about the spirit. I know many millionaire ministers who are not excellent at all. They are anointed. They are filled with the Holy Ghost. They are not excellent. The quality of being outstanding. The quality of being thorough. Write it, thorough. Many people are not thorough in their lives. You are studying a principle. You are not thorough. We like stopping halfway. 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 We don't ask the right questions. We don't pay the price to stay long enough. We are always in a hurry. No thoroughness. That's the result. Lack of excellence. Someone wants to learn keyboard. He just learned something small. You start roaming around and telling everybody, I can play. The fact that they are not attending to you is a message. Get angry and go back. Let me tell you something. Excellence defies religion. It defies gender. It defies race and ethnicity. You meet an excellent man. He will break any barrier in life. I was listening to a speech by one brilliant lady, Nigerian lady. Hallelujah. On KICC. And I think she's one of the editors of these great magazines. And when she was speaking, I could, I, I sat down and I felt like a child. I said, Lord, I need to rise beyond this level I am. I am where I am today because of the degree of value I have placed on excellence. If I step higher, I will rise higher than this. There are many preachers. And you know, let me tell you the thing about results and excellence. Every time you keep nonchalance and you don't move forward and someone else is moving forward, you will be angry. When I drive a golf and I bring here, there are many of you who will see, you are happy because it's consoling your present position. But if I step in here with a Lincoln Navigator, people will start talking. Some of you say, ah, me, this kind of shady success, I'm not sure. We always want people to do things that keep us comfortable. The moment they begin to do things that challenge you, you try to find excuses. See, it's not every power you see that you look at all. Forget about these people. Let me tell you something about my life. And I say this with all humility. I pray, I fast. But let me give you a bit of my personal life. Listen, every single day, every single day, I do not sleep until I take out time to study on leadership, on finance, on entrepreneurship. Are you listening to me? Many people just think I'm just standing and God anointed me. Get the anointing and go. Are you listening to me? I don't do that. In my laptop right now, I have Christ Embassy Pastoral Course. The whole series. This is not even something that is given anyhow. I made sure I got it. I'm listening to it. Oga Jordan brought certain books. I ordered it right now. There are four books that I have and I must read at least between now and the next two weeks. Be the Best by Matthew Ashimolo. 10 M's of Money by Matthew Ashimolo. Pastoring Without Tears by Sondia Delaja and the Jesus He Never Knew. These were new books. When he brought John Maxwell's Five Levels of Leadership, I saw it, I bought it. What are you doing to leave the level you are in now and rise to become a world champion? Many of you are waiting. 
the day my brother arrives, he will remember me. And then you'll be angry because your brother will forget you when he gets there. Say this brother self. What is the benefit of an elder brother? Is it not to take some of us? Don't start doing something about your life. We are always waiting for somebody to pick us. When will you start carrying others? Every day. Are you listening to me? In my system right now, I was given Global Leadership Summit for last year, 2012. I have it. And I've been listening to it. Some of the brilliant Christian minds in leadership across the whole world. When I listened to the first one, I put my hand on my head. I got down on my knees. I felt ashamed of myself. I said, Joshua Selma, what have you been doing? I'm sure many of you are surprised now. That's how, that's how you'll be surprised. Me too, I'll be surprised. Them too, they are surprised when they listen to somebody else. Join the flow. Don't stand outside and be criticizing and talking. Because very soon, all you'll see is dust by champions who have passed you. Are you listening to me? What do you think preaching is? Just standing to talk? Do you understand that for you to be a good preacher, there are some things you need to have? The psychology of communication? You need to know a lot of things? What do you think preaching is? Just holding a mic take. And you watch the way people will be sleeping the moment you are talking. Say after me, excellence. Very important. I need you to get this. When God told us we're starting koinonia, we didn't just sit down while we're praying and we're fasting. What happened? We set up different departments and began to run trainings for different people. Most of the people you see today, they were not like that. A true leader does not maintain followers. He raises other leaders. We have a lot of preachers maintaining followers so that they alone will become the superstar because they are intimidated. They need to go and read books and attend courses and trainings. But they won't do it because they've surrounded themselves with mediocres that keep lying to them. Your greatest enemy is the one who encourages you to remain where you are. I don't care who that person is. My father told me something years ago. He said it's better to stay with a wise enemy than a foolish friend. Your friend loves you the way you are. He won't hurt you because he values your relationship. But your enemy will cause you to have to be smarter than him to survive. I refuse to remain where I am. I refuse. There are things I do all the time. Let me hurry up. I have so much, I have so much to share. To achieve excellence in life, you need the following, right? To achieve excellence in life, I will not be small. In the name of Jesus Christ, I have found my way out of mediocrity in life. I'm telling you, I found my way. I know it. I've seen the door. I found my way out of average. I found myself out of mediocrity. No competition. I found my way to be the best and be the greatest in life. This is not pride. This is the truth. This is what knowledge does to you. Intimidation is because you do not know your way out. For when you know what you have and when you see that door that has been set before you, you will rise up like a champion. Oh, I'll never be a failure. This is not a confession. It's the truth. I found my way out of certain things forever. Satan notwithstanding, I will live my life as if Satan does not exist. There are some battles. I wrote a, I read a beautiful book, a gift that Dr. John Akbami gave me. Battles Satan cannot win powerful book there are some battles that satan has lost before he started i believe hallelujah oh koinonia will keep rising no no it's no this is not the issue of amen the grace of god is there and there are principles that have been tested through centuries and decades before lord lugard amalgamated nigeria it has worked. It won't break. They are irrefutable principles. 
This is not just the issue of prayer. So long as human beings have two legs and two hands, it will work. Kapakatabala. Thank you, Jesus. This is why I celebrate him all the time. You can stand tall through life and you just look at people and say, just hold on. It's just a matter of time. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. In 2007, I was in Port Harcourt. I was taking care of someone in the house where I was staying in the hospital. UST, the highest floor. I was there. Suddenly, I looked outside through the mirror and I was taken in the vision and I saw the international headquarters of ENI. I opened my mouth. I said, is this on earth? I saw 38 flags, different nations of the world. But listen, I would have easily laid down and say, I saw it. I tell you the truth. I would have died without seeing it. Many of you have seen many things from the day you were born. How old are you now? Almost 40. Nothing has changed. Every time you are stuck in life, realize that it's a sign that what you know so far has ex is exhausted. Hallelujah. Dr. Lukoya said something one time I was listening and he said something very powerful. He said, that's what Prof said. He said, you need a level of knowledge higher than you were when the problem came to conquer it. Are you listening to me? In other words, if you are in level 8 and you find a problem in level 8, you need knowledge higher than level 8 to ever go in life. There are many people who, members, they get to 100 members and they find out that with all the prayer and fasting, they don't break that 100 member barrier. They remain there. So they just say, that's how God wants it. Or forget to, oh, anytime you see crowd anywhere, look at the man, look at his eyes very well. Only God knows what has happened immediately he's talking somebody will come with an anointing and set up something close to him and he will see the same people who he has been trying and begging see brothers and sisters anytime you are stuck in life don't waste your time criticizing those going ahead your criticism will not stop them join the train and get out of your present predicaments hallelujah Say, I'll never be a failure in life. Say, I'll never be small. Say it. Stop all this false humility. Say it. I refuse to be small in life. I'm telling you. I'm speaking to your spirit. Refuse it. Commit yourself to excellence. Be thorough. Be thorough. Be thorough. Don't leave your life to chance. Be thorough. What gift has God given you? The Bible says, Proverbs 31, verse 31. It says, many daughters have done well. But you, your excellence has brought you above them. It says, many daughters have done well. Many bankers have done well. Many media giants have done well. Many preachers have done well. Many businessmen have done well. It says, but you, excellence them all. See, let me tell you the truth. What you see in Koinonia today was my mindset of yesterday. You wait and see my mindset of today. What you are seeing today is not our mindset of today. This is old wine. I tell you the truth. This is old wine. This was the mindset we were preparing for when we were at the back of chapel. You hold on and see. For death. Let me tell you, God is alert and active watching over his word. He's watching obedient people. When God announced to us that this is a year of supernatural exploit, I knew that it's not enough to just say, thank you, Lord. I began to say, Lord, what are the things I need? It means I need a higher level of information. Oh boy, I wish I had time. All right, very quickly. I really wish I had time. 
But so, let's just get something. To achieve excellence in life, you need the following. Please make sure you are writing. Are you getting blessed tonight? Number one. When God wants to bring you into a life of excellence, the first thing you need is exposure. Write exposure. Exposure. Let me tell you something about the power of exposure. Look up. If you are not exposed to something higher than what your mind knows, your mind can paint the portrait of a world of mediocrity and leave you there. Hallelujah. I was in secondary school. Our secondary school is not like your own. The one you went to. Where you ate yam and chicken. I never ate chicken in secondary school. Just one, Hanagama. I never ate chicken. Hallelujah. Not once. But, listen, but. We were local champions around our local government. I mean, if we came to do debate with your school, you are, you are gone. Just start crying. Hallelujah. We had a debate with Jake's school. We came and came them those times. Ah, it was a delightsome experience. Ladies looked at us. They are ladies. We were winning those times. But we remained at that level until we met another school. Exposure. Say after me, exposure. God will expose you to something. Listen. Exposure, those three, those three things. Number one, the power of exposure. One, it takes you beyond your present horizon. It shows you that there is something higher than what you have seen. Exposure challenges you. Exposure provokes you. Sometimes, exposure embarrasses you. And these are all tools that God uses to show you that there is a need to step up in life. Hallelujah. Exposure. For instance, you never knew. There's one song. Um, ah, I didn't know you will answer me this way. Hold on. That's a lovely song. I said that to say this. That I just remember the story. I went for a ministration some years ago and we're just trusting God. It was an awesome opportunity to get to, even if it's 10 people. And it was wonderful. And I went there and the people treated me so well. And then there, it was a youth meeting then, but their, or their prophet or their bishop or something, he said he wanted to have dinner with me. So you know in my mind, what is dinner? What is dinner? What have you been eating as dinner? Two or something or this and that and that. So I went, was smart. When I got there and I, I saw what was there, I, I first didn't know what to do. Because I wanted to behave myself. I preached a powerful message. I didn't want to just disgrace and cancel everything that, I was looking for everything that can keep up my reputation at that point so I sat down and I saw things I didn't know what they were I saw a pack I didn't know it was milk inside you we only know milk in tin correct you are laughing which one have you seen so I didn't know it was liquid milk inside and I behaved myself I already made up my mind to be humble. So I was ready to ask questions. I had learned more than what you don't know. Just ask. Don't try to disgrace yourself the more. Ask. So I sat down and uh, I diplomatically cracked a joke and we started talking. And then I sat down there and I knew that I didn't know this thing. So I assumed that I was, the only thing I could do was to just behave like I was in the spirit. You know, they won't ask you too many questions. So I was behaving. And I was watching what they were doing. I learned numerous lessons when I was watching. I was seeing everything. I would have fumbled, disgraced myself, disgraced ENI, left a bad reputation. 
When I saw that thing, what happened? Say after me, exposure. Say it, exposure. I said, Lord, thank you that it happened with just three or four people. When I went back, I sat down on my laptop. I browsed everything about table etiquette, kinds of food, how to behave, courses of meal and everything. Because I'm making way for the blessing. You know, the more you rise, the more you implicate yourself. People expect that you should have done certain homeworks. So they just... Some of you will get somewhere. You enter someone's house. You just see two toilets. You just think it's for you to choose anyone. You don't know what it's for. Don't pretend you didn't have it. Ask questions. Don't just, ah, ah, the type in our house is green. You don't know what it's for. Say after me, exposure. Don't be ashamed. Say exposure. Many of you, when you came into this school, ladies, you know what you used to wrap around yourself. You didn't know that the society was this sensitive. You just wrap everything and put your head around. But with time, you began to study other people. You say, ah, this is not good for me. And what happened? It was a secret exposure. You didn't tell anybody. The first day you cooked, you ate it alone. All your friends were saying, Kai, you tried, oh, this is nice. Everybody left you and your food there. For some of you, from that time till now, you have been living in deceit. May God take you to see somebody's food that will provoke you not to rest till you go for catering. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Say after me, exposure. Prepare. Look up, please. I'm teaching you how to adopt the spirit of excellence. You prepare. Sir, let me have this cup. Why did they do this? How many of you know? Don't pretend. How many of you know why this was done? You've never cared to ask? Why? Did, when did they start doing this? Hallelujah. One day now, you now say you want to be a virtuous lady. They'll say, sister, please come. There are some white people who just came from somewhere. And I hear you attend Koinonia. You, you are a disciplined lady. I mean, all the rest run around. Please help us. Just set the table and make sure you make everything. And you are sweating around. Set the table. Oh, God. The Bible says you are the one who will do it. Now I'm the one who is doing it. Thank you, sir. And you disgrace... You disgrace yourself and your family. Hallelujah. Many of you keep disgracing yourselves and disgracing people. You know why? Shame will never live your life until you adopt the spirit of excellence. Hallelujah. You saw that a new design came out. You didn't ask all the questions how they wear it. You went, your money only reached for one part of the dressing. You carried it, wore it, and you were just coming around and smiling, looking at yourself, almost hitting yourself. Exposure. Say after me, exposure. It's not your fault. You came from the village. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. You have been lying as if you are living in Ikoi, Lagos. Humble yourself, embrace the exposure, and leave that realm. Leave that realm. They bring something for you. You don't know whether it's rice or it's chicken. And it's just keep quiet. You say, ah, but uh, there's turkey. They say, no, no, it's not turkey, it's, it's fish. You say, ah, I forgot. See me again. Now, you are tongue talking. You are tongue talking. You are anointed. Do you think if I'm a director and I want to employ you, I will employ you to go and disgrace my company? No way. No way. And you say, somebody in your village. Whereas somebody who is not born again, not filled with the Holy Spirit, but pays the price to learn some things. You are going for a job interview. You are, you are dressing as if you are going to watch football. You are seeing everybody dressing smart. And you will just throw, say, the most important thing is the anointing I have. You enter the place, they say, why are you like this? This is how you want to become a staff? Are you aware this is a bank? 
or this is an insurance company. You say, yes, I'm aware. You are, you are now getting arrogant because you think you are standing in front of Koinonia. You just imagine that is your church. What is all this now? They've taught you positive confession. You are now shouting. The people say, please, this way. Walk out of this place. We don't like this kind of people. Walk out of this place. Hallelujah. Many of you do not want to train yourself. You don't want to build yourself. You have been taught that knowledge is inferior. The most important thing is just the anointing. I'm teaching you today that excellence will take you out of where you are into a world that you have never imagined. Please, let's hurry up. Thank you, Jesus. So you need what? Say, Lord, expose me. It could be an illumination in the world that you have never seen. And God exposes you. It could be a program. It could be whatever that opens you up. Exposure. This is a beautiful design by our decorations department. Appreciate them. Exposure. Because when you become a champion, you will know how to celebrate people. Appreciate them, please. Hallelujah. You go for a meeting somewhere, they say, this is a professor. Everybody is clapping you. You are sitting down. They will say, sorry, please, can you? They will lead you outside as if they want to ask you a question and close the door. They are videotaping it. They want to show the world. There, there is a way. See, listen. It's called the law of protocol. Protocol. Learn these things. Learn it. Learn it. Learn it. Don't say it does not matter. How old are you that you are saying it does not matter? Those who have been practicing it have lived by it. I hope you are receiving something tonight. I hope you are not just laughing. Because me, I'm serious about what I'm saying. It must not be a negative exposure. There are negative exposures. For instance, you see a lady who is a prostitute, dresses one kind, and she comes and you are there seated, and many guys are just coming. You say, all right, so this is what guys want. That's it. You go back. You know how Nigerian films are. The next thing, they show the villager girl just comes out. Say, how do I look? They say, this is it. And then the men begin to come. That's negative exposure. Positive exposure will inspire you. Are you listening to me? It won't kill your destiny. It will inspire you. Many of you are mentoring the lives of people who are not born again. They are not serious. They are not using principles that are consistent with the word of God. You will become like them and you will go to hell at the end. So stop that. Everything we are discussing has to be within the jurisdiction of the principles of the kingdom. So number one, you need exposure. Number two, exposure will create a need in you to rise higher. And this leads to the next point, determination. Because of the pain of the embarrassment you had, you will vow a vow that nobody needs to supervise. You tell yourself it will never happen again. I was told one day that there are some guys, young guys are like claiming us in this kind you know, young guys, when they see an elderly woman, they like claiming, look, I'm responsible. I can take care of your daughter. And so the, the car had a problem. And they asked them, the woman was inside and they wanted to jumpstart it. So the guys were pushing. The woman was tired. She said, ah, you poor young men, sorry, some of you enter and none of them could drive. And they had been behaving as in, we are ready to take care of your daughter. The woman said, confidently, say, please enter and help me, you know, an old woman I've tried. And the guys were sweating there. Yeah. Oh boy, you saw me drive the other one and said, No, you go. If I ask you why can't why can't you drive? You say, Because a car has not come. That's called mediocrity. Favor is when preparation meets opportunity. Sister. What can you cook? Jollof rice and boiled yam. What else? Nothing else. Who do you want to marry? Pastor. And kill him. And kill him. 
What if he fasts for seven days? That's what you plan to give him? And the guy has not come and said, Lord, I'm warning you now. Oh, oh. Uh -uh. Stop warning God. Get back. Create exposure. And have a determination to move ahead. You have a restaurant. Nobody has come to eat. You didn't ask why. You went for prayer. Now they prayed for you. Nothing changed. Is the rice that is overnight by 1 p.m. You are still selling yesterday's rice. I will never come and eat in your restaurant. Whether you are a member of Koinonia, it doesn't matter what department you are functioning. I won't come and eat because I have only one body and I need to take care of it. If you are not ready to step up and then we say we are looking for caterers to cook for the ministers, you say I'm available. Available. Music artist. I was listening to a lady today. Top sticks, they call her. Ah, I put my hand on my head. Do you know her? How many of you know her? Yet you see, I'm a drummer. Say, I saw myself in the dream playing drums. Don't just let dreams deceive you. It takes action to bring what you have seen in the realm of the spirit to manifest in this realm. Am I challenging you? I watched this lady. I put my hand on my head. I wanted us to play it. It would have challenged you, sisters. There is no excellent person who is not prosperous and fulfilled because it would defy barriers. The same way some people are begging for jobs. Certain people... See, I learned a lesson in life. I'm still coming back for banks. Banks, I'm coming back for you in the future. I applied for a loan in 2008. The banks did this. They looked at me, looked at me, sized me and, and drove me out. I said, no problem. A day will come. It will be members of Koinonia that will have that bank. That, that, that was no Koinonia then, E and I. When they have it, I can walk in. There's what we call human capital, not land. You are the capital. So I said, if I don't have land, I will become the capital. Get knowledge. Get wisdom. Become equal to a nation. One man. Pastor Tunde Bakare was preaching. A bank abroad called him and they were begging him. They said, please collect a loan of $10 million. They were begging him. He said, what for? He said, please just take it. They said, because they are afraid of the recession. So they are looking for human beings that control influence. So that they will collect loans. So it can keep the bank stable. Are you listening to me? So people like Adeboya and the rest now. If he comes for loan, he is equal. Look at redeem. Can they make one bank? Or how many banks? So they will say, please, Papa, collect money from us. Some of us are begging and say, give us money. Wait, wait. Uh, you have to present this and that. I said, no problem. It's not your fault. I don't have land, but I can have what? I said, I'm coming. This is the right thing you will do this thing for. This one that you do. I'm coming back. And I said, a day will come. On my table will be many offers from banks. I said, the problem is that we are blessed. Let me just pray for you. Is it not increase you want? Oh, it will happen. It will happen. It will happen. <laughs> knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. I found my way to the top. It will happen. It will happen. A day will come. I will ask. See, some of you one day will sit down. If you take what I'm saying serious. You say, mommy, do you want a bungalow? Matiwashimolo, hog bread in this area. The road you follow to come for Koinonia. He put bread on his head. Buy bread. Buy bread. He was hogging it. Some of our parents were laughing at him. Now, he's a world champion. What takes a man from a bread? He came to Zaria. He has a house. He still has a house there. When he came in, he said they should build the house. And in 30 days, they completed it. Plus polishing. Why wouldn't they build it when the money is there? Some of our parents have been building since 1991. Just four bedroom flat. Till today, we have not completed it. Everybody you thought was stopping the building has died. Yet the building has not increased.
Now, let's visit that word I wrote. Change. Change. Help us, Holy Spirit. Change. Remember the word? Let's visit it today. When you are determined to succeed, that means you are determined to change some things about your life. The difference between the rich and the poor is not money. It's their habits, their mindsets. The difference between those that God uses mightily and those who grumble and criticize and scrabble over others is their mindsets. And I want you to live where you are today and rise. There's always backbiting. There's nothing called frontbiting. Backbiting is for those who are far behind, who are looking for an excuse for why they are where they are. change listen there are a few things i've seen that happen to people every time you hear the word like this i wrote reactions that for on change number one refusal or denial or indifference about your present situation that means why you need to remain there there are many of us when you hear a word like this it will embarrass you it will sting your ego that's what is happening to many of us you are angry. You wish you can flog me. That's why you are not sitting here. And now you are just saying, oh God, this guy, why is he saying this thing now? There are many people who hear messages like this and get angry. They don't know why they are angry. They think they are angry at the man of God. They are not angry at the man of God. It's a reaction that is compelling change. Because when you hear a message like that, it rattles you. And you can either be meek and broken or you can stand and give excuses and say, okay, forget it, Jare. So the first thing people do when they are confronted with change is to refuse it. They try to give excuses. They try to be indifferent and say, well, I've had the time will tell who is right. Me, I'll keep my prayer. I won't let anybody preach any nonsense. Time will tell. You better repent now. You don't need to wait till the future. Just look. Look at two people. One who looks like you and one who looks like what you are preaching. Project them and see what is happening to their lives. Experience. People say it's the best teacher, but it must not be your experience. Be wise enough and look at other people. For instance, our family members. I know families that conduct vigils every Thursday and Friday in their house. They wake everybody. Some of your families do that. The moment you see people waking, know that your father is under pressure. Something is wrong. Wake up and come out. We have a problem and you are sleeping there. Come out. And you are praying and you are sleeping. You are saying, Lord, is this really the solution to this problem? Because your father cannot sleep. You will sleep too. Growing up, when my father is annoyed, everybody must partake of that annoyance directly for something very small like keeping this bible here you say is this where it's supposed to be you know that the real thing is not the bible there's it's a cumulative of something you watch your friend on news you just start getting angry and see all these people they now pretend as if they don't know us the truth is he has forgotten about you let me just tell you the truth because they don't look back leaders look forward so if you ever want people to remember you, come forward. Many of you are there angry. They don't remember us. Uh -uh. You want them to just turn back like that? So that they will fail and then you say, hey, I knew it wouldn't last. That's indifference. If it works well, you say, I knew. It's just that I didn't say it. If it fails, you say, Shabi, I, I told you I'd be indifference. After you refuse, then it leads to anger and embarrassment. That's the second stage. Because right now you are, that anger and embarrassment is a confrontation in your heart. You are knowing, you are knowing right now that this is true. I need to change. So you are either getting angry at the vessel or you are getting angry at your situation. Number three, the moment you finally settle it, that where I am, it's not good enough. What happens? The third thing is you begin to negotiate for cheap routes so that you escape fast, so that people will not know. Cheap routes. 
unfortunately there are no cheap routes in life it's only in advertisement i have one this thing on my phone he said marriage instant no dues so he wrote he said there's no marriage instant no dues it's in america they do that oh i love you you love me let's marry they just get one priest from somewhere just comes out from somewhere and just join the people two weeks later you look at them and say how are you say, i'm not doing it again he doesn't love me oh. Love you. What did, what were you thinking? What were you thinking? When your mother was getting married in the village, she knew she was in for it. She was determined to make it work. We're not touching those areas now. Ah, one day we'll talk about it. You've not heard me preach about it for a long time. I went to Delta and when they were picking me for the state conference from my hotel room, the two guys were arguing. They said, sir, want to find out your opinion about marriage. I said, ah, don't start because I said, you people don't want to know my opinion. My opinion about many things is always causing trouble. So a day will come, we'll share that one. Praise God. I'm sure that day some of you will just stand up and say, just walk away. <laughs> Negotiating for cheap alternatives. Cheap alternatives. If that does not work, then you come to terms with the fact that change is inevitable. In other words, you cannot hide it. You may cry about it. You may feel embarrassed about it. But you have to change. At that point, it will bring you to a point where you are humble. And you will receive and say, okay, I'm wrong. I need to change. Listen, do you know how hard it is for people to accept change in their lives? Because change means you have to admit that what you know is not enough. That's why humility is the fastest tool to receive change. Once you are humble, you can embrace change. Hallelujah. Have you seen someone in class who bragged about one test? The guy bragged and said, if I don't pass, change my name. And then, maybe it's just one question. So you either get 10 over 10 or 0. And they were calling the names of those who are 10 over 10 and his name was not there. And then the guy just sat down and everybody's looking at him. And the guy is trying to manage multiple pressures, not knowing what to do. And then they say, who can help us solve it? And then the guy wants to quickly stand up and go and solve it. He said, oh, I know the right thing. And when he stands up, he says, no, 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 you got 0, please sit down. They will keep embarrassing you till you come to a point where you say, all right, I am a brilliant student, but I didn't get this right. See, have meekness and humility. It will help you embrace change. Are you listening to me? Meekness and what? Humility. There are people today in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. God has opened them up to a revelation. But changing it may mean changing the ideology of the ministry. They would rather remain like that than to contend for truth. Is that true? Some of your churches are like that. The founders, the overseers, whoever, God has given them encounters and are saying this gospel you are preaching, you need to change it. Something is wrong. And they look at the reputation they have built for decades and say, Kai, if I change this thing now, it's as good as dying. Hallelujah. Or your father beats your mother. Two of them do and go and they go to church. And then a man of God with big mouth like me comes and says, there are men in this place. You beat your wife this morning before coming. And he said, say, turn to your wife and say, I'm sorry. And you see your father struggling with change, battling with change, doing suddenly like he's sending a text message. Or oh God, turn to your wife and say, I'm sorry. Just battling. That's why I taught you these virtues last week. I'm sorry. Remember? Please. What else? Thank you. You came for koinonia and you matched somebody. The person says, sister, you matched me. You just turn and look at him and say, is it where they keep Bibles? Why don't you change? Change is very hard. This is what kept, this is what kept Nitel out of the way. If your father works in Nitel, I'm sorry. But this is what took them out. The ability to 
Embrace change will always keep you in season. Hallelujah. Many people have refused to change. And now they are victims. Let's hurry up. Number three. All those things I've said are number two. To achieve excellence in life. One, you need exposure. Two, determination to succeed. That's where we spoke about change. Number three. Set goals. Set goals. On what you want to become like. Set a high standard. If you tell me you want to become excellence, I'll say like who or what. Give me a reference. You must have a reference. A reference is someone or something that have become close or equal to what you want to become like. You must have somebody or somewhere you are looking up to. Set a very high standard. Set a clear standard. I want to be an entrepreneur. What kind? Like who? Call the name of one person who can give us a portrait of what you want to become like. Those in the world know that. Ask them who is your role model. They just say Timaya. Ask a small child. I mean, at least they have an idea. You know what that means? Go to their rooms and all you see is Timaya's tapes and everything. Because they want to follow the principles he followed to get there. Ask believers. You say you are an artist. You say wonderful. So, tell me three people that really inspire you that you want to become like. Say, me, oh, the way I do my things, even me, I'm not sure. We just keep moving. You will never, never become the kind of figure that you are seeing. I assure you. I assure you. Unfortunately, and I must say this now, many pastors have taught people that if I am your pastor or I am your spiritual father, I'm the only one you should listen to. Don't listen to anybody. Don't take anybody. Question. You want to become a media giant. Your pastor is only a preacher. How is he going to mentor you into that? He can guide you. He can instruct you. He can advise you. But you need to find a mentor along the area that God is taking you to. This is the message they don't preach in church. Because people always think, oh, if you are my son or you are my daughter, it means your offering is coming to me alone. Get that junk out of the church. That's what is keeping people where they are. It looks popular, but it did not come from God. It doesn't produce successful people. You want to own an airline like which one you don't know i assure you you won't arrive i watched one cartoon growing up called alice in wonderland fantasies that happen in one wonderland that's how many people are living <laughs> you ask them they, start, they even close their eyes when they are telling you you won't get there look at me i want to ask two people randomly brother stand up you stand up what do you want to become in life don't shout me come and tell me don't, don't need to tell everybody none of their business all right this is why you are here may god bless you for your honesty are you seeing that he said an answer that many of you will not have courage to say because you sit down and act like you know how about you sir okay. i want to be a solution to you. you want to be a solution to the world Ick. No, no, don't laugh. Hold on. This is a school. You want to be a solution to the world. That's wonderful. What solution? A medical doctor is a solution. A carpenter is a solution. A mechanic is a solution. A banker is a solution. In what area? Biochemistry. In biochemistry. So you want to take that field. God bless you. You see now that what you see what you are receiving in this place, guidance. So go and find a God-fearing biochemist. Are you listening to me? How do you get that? Go and Google it. Christian professional biochemists. Look for them. You find a particular biochemist. He has probably written books. He probably has videos on YouTube. Go to engineering faculty in the night. Pay the price and download it. And start listening. You will get their mindsets. Before you know it, you will rise above ABU. Rise above Zaria. In my mind, I've left Zaria. In my mind, I've left Nigeria. I, I never will be limited with this environment. Hallelujah. Are you learning something now? So, write it. 
Find somebody. Say, who do you want to become? Say, an apostle. Like who? What is a God? To, what did God tell you? You are not clear. Go back. Stop going out. Go back to the secret place. There are questions to ask. But you left an incomplete session and you got up and you are running. There are many ministries today. Ask me what every time we hold leadership meetings, whether ministers meeting, whether um, um, HODs or escorts or whatever, the f we discuss it. I tell them why this ministry exists. In one sentence, I can tell you what we are here to do. Periodically, I remind all the leaders, we are not existing to do everything. There are many preachers, go and ask them, why did you start your church? Say, well, an angel appeared, it was on the 20th. Why did you start your church? Say, the angel told me, he said, now this day I have commissioned. Why did you start your church? Little wonder people are committed in your church. They come and go because there is no definition of vision. They don't know what they are going to become. Why did you start your church? Now you started a prayer group. Even if it started supernaturally, eventually you go and ask God. He said, now Lord, people are coming in this prayer group. Where are we going to? You are just praying with a sister. Praying with a sister. Where are you going to? Do you like her? Are you starting the ministry together? Are you prayer partners? Vision! Define it. We be praying every day and the sister is saying, so what's the next instruction God is giving? You are saying, let's just keep praying. Where are you going? Nobody follows a leader that does not have conviction and where you are going. I assure you. So set goals. Set goals. In the area of finances, there are people that I model their lives. In the area of ministry, there are people I model their lives. In the area of leadership, there are people. I plan to be higher. When you go to my place, you see, above my television, I put my picture there. People think it's just for entertainment. No. It's prophetic. Because I'm seeing it, I'm saying, whatever I see on this television, the hand of God will take me above it. And then, you see books there. Some of you, when we get there, it's just dreams you write. Wishes useless wishes that may never come to pass the only goal you have is the kind of man you want to marry that's good but that's not enough you even draw the person his eyelashes must be wide and rich here apply that same principle for your life and destiny or the brother she must be this me I won't take anything Joshua Selman has taught us excellence I won't take anything then you too, you better work to match the excellence you want. There are many brothers here. You want a beautiful sister. Every time you come, you just look at her. Just turn, worship team. You are just looking. You are not organized. You are not well behaved. You are not well cultured. You are not disciplined. You have no vision. You are not doing anything about your life. They say, who do you want? One day you even meet your friend and say, I've been thinking about something. You better stop thinking. You better stop thinking. Quick! And, and get to what you are doing. Better stop thinking. Don't punish your mind for nothing. Stop thinking. First things first. Stop thinking. Clarity. Say after me, I receive grace to set definite goals for my life write a quick assignment you do write three go and look for three people that represent the areas they must be believers they must be believers three people that give a picture of what you know god wants you to do whether in ministry not very high raise your standard high if you want to own a tv ministry like which one for instance, you can say like TBN, like God TV, like KICC, for instance. You say, God has told me this, my hand will count money. There's one song. You see this, my hand, you. Many people even count it. You go count dollars. You would dance that thing and never count any dollar. It's wonderful. Do the motions of the church, motivate yourself. But after that, go and sit down. Didn't even mention Naira. 
mention dollars. Hallelujah. Set a standard. When I look at ministry, there are people that inspire me. I read their books. It doesn't mean you will receive everything. There will be excesses here and there in their lives. Jump all those things and concentrate on what you can get. Are you listening to me? There are many people whose mindsets in certain areas I don't quite agree with. Stop criticizing. Just get what you can get and go. Hallelujah. Set goals. So that you can know when you set goals, you must begin to put pressure on yourself to achieve those goals. Don't just set blind goals. Set goals. There are ministries that we, as a ministry, I've, I've taught, I carried the heads of department, the ministers, and we went to Koza Abuja. Why? Because I love and I respect their excellence. Do you know it takes a lot of humility to do that? Because I'm not failing in ministry. I know I'm anointed. But you must humble yourself. I'm saying it openly because it's not a thing to hide. There are many ministers that listen to my messages and just stand up and pretend. They, I know it. I see it sometimes in visions. See, celebrate greatness when you enter its presence. There are people who bless my life. I don't hide it. And we took all the leaders and we went to Koza. We went in the morning. We sat down there. Our head of department of different departments went to their head of departments and they were learning. Don't ask questions why we are excellent. And this is not, this is old wine. I'm telling you, this is old wine. You wait and see what God is doing. They have adopted principles. For instance, I know that Ilorin and Ibadan is the place of music people. Is that true? Some of you musicians don't even know. You think it's, it's Samaru. That's the problem. Come. He was over at my place today and I was doing discussions with him. It was him that told me about the lady. How many of you like his singing? Ilorin people again. You see that? And I was, I was asking him a question. I said, tell me about the music in Ilorin. And he said, ah, the people there, most of them like money, 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 but they are excellent. They are competent. I said, ah. I said, tell me more. And I was just listening. He said, tell me more. I said, all right, God bless you. Every time I challenge the decorations department, they don't just bring some of these designs off heart. They sit down and look at certain things. The protocol, almost every department and if you're a head of department here and you don't have an idea of any ministry that does your department and an idea of a picture, it means you are misleading your people. You do anything you want to do today. You do, thank God there are ministers there to supervise you. When you are going out, of course, it's our job to bring you back. Question. Who inspires you? Yourself. That's why you are still where you are. You are the only one who inspires yourself. You don't have any figure that inspires you out of the many mentors in my life my greatest mentor is jesus christ and i no 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 i know many of you will not jesus inspires me boy when i study the bible sometimes i just put it on my head i say baba jesus i just laugh i mean this guy was something else he inspires me who inspires you show me the person that inspires you and i'll tell you why you are in your life for many of us, we are surrounded by people who are failures in life. It doesn't mean you should hate them, but they cannot be your role models. It's out of pity many of us look up to some people. I won't let a failure inspire me. I won't criticize him. I will love him. But I know he will not help me to get where I want to go to. There are many of you who are friends with people who don't inspire you. It's just out of pity. We have been there since secondary school. You want to read after you read for two hours verse say, i beg jare jesus is coming soon you say not true or you just close your book and you keep getting zeros 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 and you'll be wondering zeros 
the best student in your class is reading, you go and sleep and come back and still see the person reading. Because every time he's tired, he sees, did you have that kind of thing in secondary school where you have the best two students? When somebody's tired, he looks at the person who took first last semester. See, I'm not going anywhere. We must read together. Provoke one another. I'm not teaching you to have a competitive spirit. But you must, who challenges you? I don't mean makes you envious. Challenges you. I taught the worship team one time. I told them, I said, acknowledge those who are better than you. Hallelujah. Acknowledge it. When you look and say, Selena can hold this camera. If I hold this camera and you watch the video, you will stone me. Hallelujah. I wasn't trained to do it. When they were being trained, I was doing something else. So I'm not that competent. So if I come and see Selena and say, well, is it not this simple thing? Mm -mm. Celebrate greatness when you see it. Hallelujah. You will now see these worship people and say, ah, ah, I thought this lady is a new lady. She came, ah, ah, worship team have accepted her. They are trying. No, why didn't they take you? You see, people have this negative, critical spirit. Hallelujah. Why are the protocol people standing and wearing white? Can't they just dress anyhow? Don't communicate your frustrations looking at things around. Calm down, get the word and change. Let me tell you something. 95% of people who criticize only criticize because they desire to be in that position that they are criticizing. It's a bad spirit in Nigeria. They've been insulting good luck Jonathan and they've been doing a lot of things. People have been swearing, if we see you, kill. he has been in Meduguri and Yola for the past two days. Nobody did anything. Everybody was shouting, hey, the same people. What are we saying? Who is deceiving who? Four, pay the price for new information. You need new information to rise to a new level. You need new information. What you have is good, but it's not enough. Hear me. You are a book writer. You wrote your book. It's only you and your family members that know. That tells you that your information is insufficient. You launched it in your church. They piled the book for you there. Now you are giving it as donation because nobody will buy it. You were not ready. You just followed one foolish motivation that you cannot explain and wrote books that don't have head and sense. Later on, after two years, you read them and saw nonsense that you wrote. Principles that don't work. They are not even work. The best time to begin to bring people into some things is when you become the epistle of your message. At that point, nobody can contend it. If I tell you that spitting on people's face is bringing miracles, I tell you the truth, if I can prove it, you will be surprised to see how people will believe it. There are many people talking things they cannot prove. I learned this early enough. So I made sure that I'm the guinea pig. There are many things today I'm saying. You people are believing it only because you have seen we have become epistles of some of these things to a measure. Otherwise, you will not believe it. Pay the price for new information. Get books. Get books. The Bible says, buy the truth. Borrow vessels. You may not borrow oil, but you can borrow vessels. Get books. Oh God, Jordan is here. There are books outside, I believe. Buy them. Buy books. Study. Go for knowledge. Respect knowledge. Respect knowledge. Intellect is not everything, but I'm telling you, respect the power of a transformed mind. Respect knowledge. Don't criticize it. Respect knowledge. Go for new information. Meet people who know. Humble yourself. Get tapes. Koinonia messages are here. Many of you have been suffering certain things that the solution has been preached in these messages. Listen to it. Again and again. Sit down with books and tips and challenge yourself that you are going to change your life. Not just sermons. 
books by people who have proven track record. Number five, apply these principles diligently. Apply them. The end of every knowledge is application. Whatever you do not apply cannot help you. I'm telling you this. Many of us know so many things, but we refuse to apply them. The most dangerous thing that can happen to a man is to have knowledge without application. There are many people holding all kinds of seminars around Nigeria. Success motivation. And you see the person comes rickety, not motivated, bad, terrible, battered, and he just drops and says, there are three Ds. Determination, dedication, diligence. Look at the person who is talking. Say, you must be determined. This guy is weary already. There were four people who came. He thought hundred people would come. Say, determination, diligence. And the person is already weary. Go back to your secret place. Apply the new information diligently. Number six, be disciplined and consistent in practicing the new principles. Many people lack discipline. It takes discipline to keep practicing these principles. Even if the result is not showing now, you have been tightened. The result is not showing now. You've been reading books. That continue, continue, don't stop. Pastor Chris will say, keep saying it. Don't stop talking it. Let me add to it. Keep doing it. Don't stop doing it. No matter what the, you are praying every day, you are studying your Bible, you are reading books on leadership, you are fine-tuning, you believe that you are going to have one of the biggest catering firm in Nigeria. Now you have certain people who are some of the top caterers. You are following them and you are taking it diligent. You are practicing some principles. It looks like it's not working. Continue. Give yourself wholly to them. I promise you, opportunity will come and your preparation will more than pay for it. Hallelujah. Be consistent. Be disciplined. Many of us are not disciplined. It takes discipline to maintain a consistent prayer life. It takes discipline to maintain a consistent word life. Because sometimes you are tired. Sometimes when is my time to follow materials on leadership and all of these things. I'm tired. I'm really tired. Physically exhausted. I may have spent the whole day counseling. But sometimes when I lie down, I remember that I have people to lead. I think about you. And it inspires me. I get up. Sometimes I literally crawl. I'm telling you with my knees. I put on my laptop. I said, eyes, you can sleep. But my head, stay awake. And I keep following it. I just get a drink or something. And I force myself. Listen, you must let your body know it's not in control of your destiny. Be consistent. Be disciplined. It's your time to study. You are studying a book. Your friend says, come. There's one, there's one uh, powerful program. Or one man of God has come to town. Wonderful. As great as that is. Ask yourself a question. Is the program you are going to, going to help you to achieve your vision? If it will not, you better sit down and continue doing what you are doing. Be consistent. Say, I receive grace to be disciplined. Discipline is doing the same thing whether the condition is favorable or not. That's discipline. Force yourself. Constrain yourself. My body is already used to me. I can come back from a trip. When I come back from a trip, I know that it's time to do some things. I'm tired and I'm exhausted. I rest though. Don't get me wrong. I have days that I pay that debt but I pay it at the right time. When I need to do something, my body is not going to stop me. There are many of you, you have slept away your destiny. You have slept away a realm that you would have got to. You sleep as if it's a demonic attack. The moment you hold the book, you are drowsy. But when you are gisting, when you are lying, have a... 
Number eight, never give up. Never give up. We are going to pray right now. Never give up. Never. No matter what happens. No matter what happens. Champions are those who survive what others cannot survive. Never give up. Say after me, I'll never give up. Never give up. I'm imparting this word in someone's spirit tonight. Never give up. Those who succeed in life are those who ride against the odd. Samson's eyes was removed, but he still held on to the pillars. He said it's not too late. I'm speaking to someone tonight. The devil has spoken to you. Hear me, some of you are outside and you've written certain exams and the devil is telling you your life is over. I bring you a prophetic word. Never give up. I don't care what happened. What, what your CGPA is. I, some of you may have made costly mistakes and you've lost certain things. You were not born again. You slept around. Whatever it is, never give up. You can always start again. Listen. The problem in life is not how fast or slow you are moving. It's that you are not moving at all. That's when it becomes a problem. Because in the ark of Noah, the cheetah entered and the snail too got into the ark. No matter how slow, tell yourself I will continue. Job said, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait. For if your strength fails you in the day of battle, the Bible says your strength. I've read the story of CEOs of companies. Oh, you cannot imagine what those people have gone through. I've read the story of preachers that have mega churches. You cannot imagine the persecutions that this man survived. There is nothing you are going through in your life that you cannot conquer if you can keep at it. Many, many of our fathers, they would have been successful businessmen today if they did not give up. They started a business together with their friends. On the way, what happened? Maybe the tanker capsized and they lost the foil. And the friend said, I will continue. Now he owns an oil well and your father is coming to beg him and say, hey, must remember. I want to take you out of the life of a beggar and make you a leader and a champion forever. And I curse every pronouncement upon your life. I curse every tongue. I curse everything that we want to stop you from sharing this word tonight and rising into a glorious destiny. I call your spirit into a higher level of grace. I call your spirit into a higher level of glory. I prophesy and I speak according to the measure of grace that God has granted. You will rise from where you are in the name of Jesus. Academically, I call you rise above and beyond this level. Dominion. Listen. There is fulfillment when you embrace a life of excellence. When you refuse to stop where you are. Where you refuse to stop. Many of you may need to go and take some extra courses to prepare you for where God is taking you. Many of you will need to get some books. Go to catering school. Go to media schools. Many of you may need to follow, buy magazines, buy what will help you. Go for knowledge. There's no time to waste. Your generation is waiting. Buy tapes of musicians. Buy tapes of drummers, bass guitarists. Get it. I'm telling you, get it. It will change your life. Stop playing around with your destiny. Get it. I'm telling you this from the depth of my heart. You will never be a failure if you follow these principles. Rise up on your feet and let's go. Lift your hands and bless the Lord. And say, I found my way out of mediocrity in life. I found my way. Lift your hands inside and outside. Say, Lord, thank you for your word. I found my way. I'm a champion. My background notwithstanding. My present situation notwithstanding. Pray. Say, I go for knowledge. I go for knowledge. I'm excellent in everything that I do. I'm excellent. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. So adopt that spirit of excellence. Go back to your room. Go and wash all those dirty and scattered plates that you have left for months, for weeks. Hallelujah. No, I need to talk to you. Hallelujah. There are guys, you wear inner shirts, inner wears for weeks, for months. You don't wash it. You don't care. You carry one shirt. It's smelling sweat. You adopt the spirit of excellence. Get out of that mindset. Your singlet is brown. Pack it and throw it and buy another one. You have been buying chocolate. 150 naira. Buy polish for your shoe. Get an iron. Press your clothes well. If you're barbing, barb well. If you're leaving your hair high, trim it well. Be smart. Be smart. Behave like a leader. Don't be roaming around laughing anyhow. No. Behave yourself. Don't buy something and be eating on the road. You are eating granite. You are eating this. You eat something and you just throw it on the road. Behave. As if you know that God is taking you far. It's a spirit of excellence. Don't keep your room unkept. Untidy. Everything is not going well. You are just happy. Your notebooks are torn. Get something and fix it up. You buy your books. Everything is torn. Your bed sheet is dirty. You are looking at it. You can't wash it. You can't clean it. You are waiting for somebody to do it. Polish your shoe. Take your time. Be smart. You may not have money to change your hair. But can't you comb it? Comb it. Look nice. When you want to cook food and give somebody, prepare it, package it well. Adopt the spirit of excellence in everything you do. When you want to greet people, take out time and greet them well. Greet like a leader. Don't greet like a failure. Don't join people in empty talks. Profitless talks. That's the realm of mediocres. Rise to where things are happening. Hallelujah. Finally pray and say, Lord, help me. Help me. Let me take this word seriously. Say, Lord, help me. Challenge me. Let me mix this word with faith. I receive grace to be a practitioner of this word. I'm not teaching you to criticize others. Your mindset has been changed tonight. So you must approach others with love. Make sure you approach others who don't know what you know with love. Teach them and help them. Don't criticize others because you have risen higher than them. Hallelujah. The first way out of mediocrity in life is to give your heart to the Lord. Now hear me, you are here inside and outside and you've not made a genuine decision for Jesus Christ. God has sent us here to help you. There's no reason to be ashamed. There's no reason to be afraid. Or you've once given your heart to the Lord, but you found yourself derailing in the path of the Lord. Right now, wherever you are, please leave your seat and confidently walk up here. Leave your seat and come out inside and outside. If God is speaking to you, I'd like you to leave your seat. Welcome home. The Lord is keep clapping for them. They are coming. God bless you. Thank you for your boldness. Bless you, brother. Your life will never be the same. Are there any more people inside and outside? One minute and we'll wait for you. One minute and we'll wait for you. Is there any other person? God is speaking to you. It's time to make it right with Jesus. God bless you, my sister. Appreciate them as they come. Appreciate them as they come. It's a new life for you. God bless you. Thank you. We do not condemn you. We love you. We have a message that works. The real gospel that works. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, brothers and my sister. Thank you for coming. I need you to know your life will never be the same. Hallelujah. Lift up your right hand boldly and pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. 
subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline